Well, now here's the unique request. This person says, how does one successfully convey the sense of movement, that is, the subject in motion, such as a ball flying through the air, or leaves agitated by a gust of wind, and the advice is much appreciated. Well, I can think of at least four ways we can do that. Well, capturing motion for a still image is a little bit tricky. Although artists have been figuring ways to do that for centuries, but the idea of a ball flying through the air, or the, the or re leaves rustling in the tree, or maybe the way the wind would bend a tree and it's swaying like this. Well, the visual artists and the, well, photographers are visual artists too. I was about to say it that way, but painters and photographers uh, have to capture a moment, and, but if you want to show motion, you've got to find a way to convey that. Now, one way to show motion, which is kind of obvious, is exactly what you'll get if you if you have your camera pointed at something that is movement moving, but you have the camera set so that the shutter speed is slow or slower than it would be if you're trying to capture a still or keep that thing that's moving in focus, uh, then you're going to get a blur. And we see that illustrated here, traffic moving that direction. This is at night, of course, the traffic moving in that direction, tail by the, the red. We're seeing tail lights, of course, and coming this way. We're seeing headlights, and there's so many of them. And as they're moving, they're creating that blur. But if, if that's the way you want to translate something like that, the, the key is to have everything that's not moving in focus and then the, the actual movement out of focus. Now here's another uh, kind of example of that. You see this car, uh, I, this car seems to be maybe moving, maybe they're going in the same direction, but this one maybe is coming around a curve. This one doesn't really translate that way, although we do feel that movement of the blur of movement of this car. And so blurring an image is one way. Now there, um, I have an example I can show you, although the artist might be offended by my interpretation, but on the cover of Plain Air Magazine about eight years ago, uh, the artist Kong Ho uh, did this painting. And you can see it's out of focus. We feel the sense of those um, those chefs moving as they're working because we we can see what they're doing but they're being uh, slightly out of focus or uh, the way he's interpreted them feels like they are in motion so movement means in motion uh, and the of course <laughs> if you want to know the technique for that for it's a simple thing make the image are some semblance of the image and then just uh, take a, a, a flat brush of a sort, something like that, and just pull it through uh, in the direction that the image is moving. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it there because there are other ways too that we can show motion or movement, something in motion. Now the requests mention a ball flying through air. So that's another way that we can, uh, another way, brings up another way that we can create uh, the, or capture, or communicate the sense of movement. It's a movement by association. Now, if we just have an image there only of the ball flying through air, there's no association. Uh, we, we, we really might even have a problem deciding what, what's going on there. But by having this figure, here in the kicking motion, that association gives us the interpretation that it's moving. And that is what artists have used for centuries, that one of those uh, principles that artists have used for centuries, 
uh, to create the sense of motion. And here another one, you can see, if I, if I take the dog away, it's meaningless. But I put the dog in and we associate the dogs chasing the ball with the ball being in motion. And the dog's in motion too. Now, putting people and animals in motion is a matter of capturing their various angles and nature in general. I'm going to do a little something like that for you in just a moment. And here too, of course, we have the example of the, uh, the guy with the bat about to hit the ball. But if we isolate that ball just in the air, well, we do see him, see his uniform behind there. But uh, the action that he's, the pose that he's in, is in that action pose. And the action pose suggests mo movement or motion. And then the fact that the ball is right there coming towards his bat is uh, we know that because we've experienced it. And the same thing is true with the basketball here. Just floating in the air without the basket here, or the goal here, just having it float in the air there is sort of meaningless. But, but then when we see the, the goal there, the association. So movement by association is certainly one way the artists have used for centuries to show uh, motion or movement Something in motion suggests something in motion in their paintings. You can see that uh, dresses, women, uh, back when every woman wore a dress, dresses that are, we can tell the wind's blowing the dress because the back of the dress will be up in an angle. And other things like that that suggest that uh, wind is blowing or someone running. We can see the angle of the run. So the changing of the angle of the image to match how the movement is taking place is another way. So um, that comes next, movement by direction and shape change. Now here you see, we, we know these leaves are floating because we associate a leaf as either lying on the ground or it's hanging on a tree. But if the, leaf, if the leaf is floating, we show it in a different direction or turn a different direction and in a different shape. So we see different shape here, and that would be the way we'd want to interpret it. And so let me just show you briefly. Uh, we we usually think well when we're when we're uh, painting, if we're painting leaves, uh, we might be looking at a leaf and thinking of it in the shape we know it to be. Well, we might see it in this kind of shape if it were on the tree. So we might do something like like that sort of shape. Uh, if it's on the tree itself, something like that, and where we have the shape coming down here and then the, the angle like that. Now, but when the tree, when the leaves are falling, they turn in all kinds of directions, and sometimes you have something like this where you, you don't really see the shape of the leaf itself, but that's because this is in association with all of that, so that's by association as well. However, the shape is changing, the direction that it turns changes, and then if we add to that something just like this, it's just a, it's just a shape. Um, it's, it's almost just a straight line shape, something like that. Now we get the sense of falling, that the two together and in this direction. And then if we do something else, sort of like uh, we would pick up right here, where it's changing, and this one over here is, is, is coming in even a different direction. And so we might uh, just quickly kind of indicate something like that. The leaf falling, change the shape a little bit. Now we have three leaves obviously falling. And the way we created that was by uh, observing a different shape other than what we know the shape of a leaf to be and a different orientation or a different direction. If the leaf is on the ground, all of them are, you know, they're, they're sort of overlapped and they're turned in different directions, but the shapes remain very similar. But when they're floating in the air like that, they'll take on unpredictable shapes and even change shapes as they're coming down. So then having them also change size and shape. I didn't say size here. We can see where they're further away or maybe smaller leaves, you get the smaller size. So you see there's another way to make leaves floating or in motion as they'd be falling off the trees, um, perhaps with the wind blowing. It usually is when there are leaves falling off the trees. 
and of course then I'll put this this in. I'll just I'm just showing you several examples um, and of course we you can choose whether you want all those to be in focus or whether you would throw some in the distance out of focus it's the change in shape and the change in direction the direction in which it's falling that is causing that sense of motion of the leaf actually moving so there's that now the other way that we can show motion, that something in motion is still on the canvas, it's still, and yet we can show in motion uh, is also by the shape change in a repeated direction. Now that is when we have clusters, such as we have clusters of leaves here, and we have clusters of leaves here. But if, the wind, if we see them on the tree when the wind's not blowing, they're following a kind of predictable pattern depending on the shape of the tree. But if the wind's blowing and it's tilting that tree, then they're all going in the direction of the wind, as you can see here. And so they fall then. Uh, they will be different shapes, uh, but there will be a repeated direction. In other words, all that we're looking at here is repeated this direction moving this way this way this way telling us the wind is blowing in that direction and so we would just that's just exactly what we do now as you know i say it many times these quick tips are uh, intended to be short uh short enough to give you a concept to work with and something to practice but certainly not a full demonstration but for example uh, and I'll just very quickly sort of in a cartoon version to kind of show you that you would start out by creating that direction, that kind of blocking of direction. And instead of painting individual leaves there, uh, you just follow, you would follow that pattern that you're seeing those leaves fall in. But you can see by making them move, uh, and you can look at the edge shapes and whatever, making them move or uh, the cluster in a repeated direction like that let's get this I'm going to get, the, get a little bit more of that character in there sort of repeated direction uh, and then then the next cluster is moving in that same direction generally um, so this is the sort of thing and that doesn't it all just go back to observation again uh, how we when we're looking as visual artists we're not, we're, we learn to train ourselves to look beyond what it is to what it's doing. And one of the things things are doing is moving in a direction visual there. There's always a visual movement that is going in a direction. And then there's certain ways that we can use that movement or that motion, that visual motion to communicate. And in this case, we'd be com communicating a wind blowing so we'll just sort of uh, throw just a little bit more in here to sort of show you that uh, of what we're talking about there now if you have a combination I don't really need to fill in to uh, do those uh, those yellow gold ones all right now if you if you have a combination of this and a few leaves falling I'm gonna run out of space down here well that's a, a just a, a few leaves falling okay so you might have you know that sort of thing and, and doing it out of context of me but then you also communicate leaves blowing so if all the limbs are moving pretty much in the same oriented in the same direction and re that direction is repeated with the clusters and the boughs the shapes are changing and just as we talked about earlier then you are able to communicate the motion so it's all about observation. I suggest to you, because we know, uh, let me back up and say it this way. We know that um, that we can't do a plain air painting. We can't capture emotion with, with plain air painting a, 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 because motion is flash split second. So I suggest to you that one way to observe that is to study by uh, taking pictures, photographs, that capture movement and then study by the th the thing the four things I pointed out to you what's going on in that photograph what what is going on by is there is there a blur there uh, do you want to communicate that with blur 
or combination of blur and whatever's surrounding it in focus? Or do you want to communicate it by association? But whatever that thing is, having it associated with another image that's causing it to be or in some way related to that? Or do you want to associate it with a change in shape? The way, and that, that would be things are when they're floating, like leaves, things that change shape, thing that, things that are flat, paper, uh, leaves, whatever you can think of uh, in that you might see floating. It's going to change shape. It's going to be different kinds. Of, each one of those is going to have a different shape, but they're going to be following some sort of a pattern of, of motion. So we're looking for that in the, and also watching the sizes of those. And also the repeated direction that things will take as they are moving in the air. So I think maybe it might be worth some, some observation and some practice if you're really interested in, in painting or at creating a drawing of anything in motion. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.